This is the new iPhone 15 Pro Max. I think I've been waiting to have a white iPhone again for quite some time, and this is really scratching an itch for me. I had actually skipped the last version of the phone, the 14, because I just didn't think the feature set was worth it. The big deciding factor for me this time around, though, was the fact that Apple has now introduced the log encoding feature, which is gonna make a huge difference for me. And that's what we're talking about in this video. Now, the prior iPhone had the ability to shoot in ProRes. However, it had the standard image processing that iPhones usually have. Now, if you aren't sure what log encoding is, it's basically a gamma curve. Pictures tend to look pretty flat without any contrast really. The images look somewhat like this. So your image ends up looking very flat so that it preserves the details in both the shadows and the highlights on your image. Otherwise, with high contrast baked in right into the image, you would lose some of those details in the shadows and the highlights and then you wouldn't be able to recover them. From the couple of tests that I've done with this phone already, which is what we're gonna talk about today, I think this makes it a worthy upgrade for filmmakers. From all the experimentation that I've done, it seems that it actually shuts off some of the HDR processing that usually gives away phone video or iPhone video or whatever you wanna call it, but it's usually a dead giveaway, especially the ultra sharpness that is usually added in post-processing as part of the recording. Now, this is very useful, especially if you plan on taking your footage into post-production and then doing color grading on it, which by the way, if you guys aren't planning on doing post-production on it and actually color grading your footage, then please don't use this feature because as much as it is cool to have videos with log encoding or whatever, it's really meant to be taken into a post processor like Resolve, like Premiere, whatever program you use, normalized back into Rec. 709 and color graded, which is the essential part of this. So really this video and log footage and stuff like that is if you intend to use it in post-process workflows and color grade your footage. Please stop the undercorrected log footage look that's been going on for far too long now. And that's stuff that shows up on like professional spots, like TV ads and stuff like that. So now that we've seen an example of what not to do, let's take a look at ProRes Log. Now, if you wanna turn on this mode, you have to go to settings, camera settings, formats, then scroll down to ProRes encoding. And when you click on it, you'll get the option of HDR, SDR, or Log. You'll obviously wanna pick Log. And then when you go back into your camera app, you'll have the option to turn on log up here in the settings. This year's iPhone also gives you the option of shooting in 48 megapixel as well. I believe for video that's condensed down to 24 megapixel, but that's still a lot of data coming from the sensor. So these file sizes, especially if you're doing ProRes log, are not gonna be small file sizes. So just be mindful of that. The good thing about all this is now there's a USB-C port. So that opens up more options, like for example, to record directly to an SD card or an external SSD drive. From what I've seen other people testing as well, I haven't had the opportunity to test the SD card, although I did record to an external SSD drive. It works really well and it's very seamless. You just connect it with a USB-C cord and you're able to just record straight on external media. For things like an external SD card, as long as the transfer speeds are fast enough, you should be able to go straight to SD card as well if you prefer that over an external hard drive. All right, now let's jump into Resolve and with the footage that I got at the beginning of this video, let's see how well it grades. Resolve has already implemented support for Apple ProRes Log, so if you download the latest version of Resolve 18.6, you should have that in there already. So if you have that installed, you're good to go here. So here's our clip and I'll add two notes to the beginning. If I add a color space transform to our first and last note to make our in and out transforms and we go in and choose Rec. 709 as the color space and then go to gamma, you can see here they've added Apple Log as one of the drop down options for gamma. During the keynote, Apple did mention that this new Apple Log complies with ASUS standards as well. So if you grade in ASUS, I believe this will allow you to convert and work in that color space too. I still need to play around with it more. I know Resolve also supports going to DaVinci wide gamut with Apple Log as well. So if you pick ProRes Log as the input, you can pick DaVinci wide gamut and DaVinci intermediate and then work with it the way that you would with any other footage if you're bringing it into working in that color space. All right, so let's take a look at how this clip actually grades because that's what I want to figure out is does this fall apart pretty easily? Can we do stuff to it? Can we color grade? So the only thing that I did was I created a new timeline just to make it easier for us and I dragged in this one clip that's at the beginning of this video that you're going to watch and let's figure out how well this color grades. So if we go over to the color page, you can see I actually haven't done anything on this clip right now. 
I'm gonna keep this grade very simple and keep in mind that this is really just a first look kind of thing at, at how this color grades. I'm gonna have to play around with it some more and I'm also gonna have to look at the technical specifications for Apple ProRes Log just to make sure I get all everything right. But for now, I just wanna see, does this color grade, does it fall apart? Can I do more complicated things to it than I was able to do to prior iPhone footage. This is gonna be a little bit something that I don't do on my channel usually, but very live and raw, and we're just gonna look at it here one note at a time and kind of build it out. So let's add two extra nodes for now, and let's do our color space transforms on the first and the third, and also future me kind of here doing this, but after playing around with it a little bit, I actually found that you get better color rendition if you go Rec 2020 for the input color space on this. I'm not sure if that's intended or not, but at least to my eye, the colors look a lot more natural as if you would get that in real life, as opposed to Rec 709, which really makes the colors look very dull. So I'm gonna go Rec 2020 for this for right now, and then obviously select Apple Log for the input gamma. Then I'm gonna go to DaVinci Wide Gamut, as my intermediate working color space. So this just sets up our input transform. And then if I go to the last node here and then complete the sandwich, we're gonna do DaVinci Intermediate and let's go to our export, which is gonna be Rec 709 Gamma 24. So there we go, the transform, the image has been normalized and now we can kind of start grading. So let me kind of bring these around. I'm really only gonna do maybe three or four nodes here in the middle and let's kind of look at what we need to do with this. So first up, we're really just looking at getting our balance correct here. So maybe bring this up a little bit, bring the highlights up. I kind of like where the midtones are sitting there and the shadows really fall in the correct space here. The only thing that I've noticed with this, even Apple Log, but also previous iPhone footage, is that the shadows really tend to fall off very fast. It's a very contrasty look that's baked in. So if I can roll off some of this contrast just a little bit, I think that looks a little bit better and it's not as contrasty although we're still kind of almost touching the bottom here. So I, I still think that this is a pretty contrasty look, but still, anyway. Now let's kind of look at bringing up the saturation a little bit just to kind of get some more color in here. Somewhere around there looks good. And this looks good for now. Like I said, this is kind of a first look at this, but here on the second node, we can kind of play with some secondary. So let's see how well that does. Uh, for example, hue versus hue is one that I play with a lot. So let's do something like grab the yellows. Um, there's a lot of yellow in the shot, obviously making it look like early morning. So if we rotate this, let's see kind of how it does. Just a smidge warmer towards orange. I think that looks pretty good. And then I don't really have any color cast going into the, the shadows, which maybe we could add later here in a second. So far, I mean, it is grading pretty good. Even over here, just doing basic adjustments with the log wheels, I feel like bringing it, you know, bringing it way up, you can see that there's plenty of detail that it's still getting everything in the blacks here, and nothing is really clipping as far as the tops are concerned here. And if we bring it way down, yeah, it doesn't really seem to be falling apart as fast as prior iPhone footage, which if you knew if if you know if you've graded iPhone footage in the past, this would this would fall apart very fast to the point where there's there wouldn't be very much detail here or it would be very noisy or it would just get crushed beyond, you know, recognition, but so far this actually really seems to be holding up. So if I put it kind of back to where around where it was here, I think we, you know, I think this looks pretty decent already and really so far we haven't done too much, just the, the normalization into color space, we kind of backed off a little bit of the contrast. And if we continue playing with secondaries here, the only other thing is maybe hue versus saturation. We can grab some of our warms. 
And if we want, like on the cup, it's looking very saturated. So we can just back that off just a little bit in the reds. And if we go back to actually our initial adjustments and see, what if we do play with the temperature a little bit? Make this kind of much warmer. Give it that nice retro vintage vibe look. I think that looks pretty good. And none of the colors are really blowing out, so I kind of like that Apple Log right now is holding colors very well. And like I said, the most imp impressive part was playing with the offset and seeing that neither the shadows nor the highlights were really clipping or falling apart as you're grading this. So, so far I think it's doing pretty good. The only other thing I usually do is I actually usually kind of blur it out a little bit because as I've said in the video already, the one thing I absolutely hate about smartphone footage is how sharp it is. Everything is just so ultra sharp. Somewhere around 53 or 54 kind of softens it up a little bit. And, and this is kind of the poor man's way of doing it, but it's, it's giving it a little bit of a softer look. If I go back in here and sort of bump the mid-tone detail just to bring back some of the, the sharpness in the letters, for example, that looks a little bit better to me. It, it kind of took the edge a little bit off of some of the, if you can see, I don't know if you can see with YouTube compression, but especially around here in the mug, if I turn this off and then turn it back on again, it just sort of takes the edge a little bit off those those sharp lines and details, which makes it look a little bit more like normalized footage. And then the only other thing that we can mess with to see if it falls apart is let's try adding a, a window and seeing how well that holds up. Make it soft. Let's kind of follow the the light as it comes in here. Spread it across the middle of our image. So if we do Shift H, see how much it's affecting. Bring that kind of down a little bit. Just so it's kind of here where the light is. And then let's go over to Curves. And kind of play with, play with this a little bit. Yeah, I'm actually very surprised how well it's holding up. It's it's really, even if you push it a lot higher, I mean, it does eventually start clipping, obviously. But look at how high I'm having to go with this graph just to get it to clip a lot. But other than that, it's doing a really great job retaining detail. And yeah, I actually think that this is, this is far better and a much more improved version of what we had with uh, prior iPhones for sure. All right, last little test here that I did, which I quickly just added two little LUTs that I had on here, mainly just for color. They don't really do much with contrast, but I tried to see if adding LUTs would maintain the look of the footage. And as you can see, it's shifting some of the colors around, but once again, the footage isn't falling apart and it's doing a really good job at maintaining colors and highlights and shadows as well. So... I'm overall really impressed with Apple ProRes footage. Once again, this was sort of just a first look, kind of really quick jumping in here and twisting some knobs to kind of get a look that I wanted. But so far, I think it's holding up really well, and I love working with this footage so far. I think that getting it to match other cameras, for example, is going to be a lot easier. And so far, the color rendition and the shadows and everything are is, is actually really good, especially if you shoot the footage properly and everything is, you know, well lit and maintained. I think um, you can actually work with this footage really well. Now, just me personally, I'm going to stick with working with Color Space Transform. I've already seen a lot of talk and a lot of videos out there of people making their own transform LUTs to bring Apple Log into a more normalized state. I stay away from that stuff. Resolve already offers me a really great option that mathematically and correctly transforms the footage into Rec. 709 or whatever other color space I'm working in and then to Rec. 709. And I'd rather have that and handle the creative aspects myself when I color grade and resolve. Being able to accurately transform into a working color space and then out to a Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 color space is really important for me. And I'd rather have it done by Resolve that's built to do these kinds of transforms than other people's possible LUTs, which I don't know how they're gonna work with the footage. I don't know if it's gonna break the footage. I don't know if it's gonna do something that's not intended. So 
That's why I stick with Color Space Transform. I also can handle the creative part on my own in Resolve and color grade it, and I'll show you guys that as well. So I can handle that on my own. I don't want it baked into a LUT that somebody else put out there or that they're using. I'd rather be able to make my own choices as far as the creative look of the image. Also, just keep in mind that if you are using these clips in between other cameras as well, you'll have to properly group them together by camera so your transforms work properly, since you'll have to go in and choose the appropriate input on a per camera basis. All right, now one other test I really wanted to do with uh, Apple ProRes Log is see how it handled things like bright highlights, especially specular highlights, and shadows as well. So I went out and did a couple of more tests. Now, before I even made this video, I actually had already done a couple of tests on it just to see how it would work. And it really seemed to handle shadows very well, so log was very good for that. But I did notice that there was a light bulb in a prior shot that I don't have in this video that seemed to blow out pretty easily. So my whole thing was, how is this gonna hand handle specular highlights because usually how a camera handles highlights is also one of the main things that either makes it appealing or not in the final image at least in my opinion for the shadows i didn't see a lot of noise or grain so that's good because i can always add that in post-processing but things like highlights i did notice clipped out much faster so that's one of the things i wanted to test so in order to do that i went to the airport and i actually filmed some clips of airplanes taking off on the runway at sunset with the sun fully in view as well just to see how I would handle that. All of this was filmed on the stock camera app with the stock options as well because that's the thing that most people are going to be using in ProRes Log. So here's that footage. And I'll be honest with you, I was actually really surprised by this Apple log. Now, this isn't going to replace bigger cameras for me with bigger sensors and obviously in a more professional setting. There are a lot of features that you need on those cameras that you just can't get with an iPhone, as well as the sensor quality and the image quality coming out is obviously much better on a bigger camera. But if you're looking to grab a couple of shots, things that you may not have all your equipment there for, or you just want to film something, this Apple log is gonna make it a lot better and a lot easier to grade and also get a good looking image out of your iPhone. The log encoding is really gonna help with color grading the footage too and being able to match it to other cameras, so that's a great feature. The really big factors for me are the fact that the HDR processing has been turned off or at least way lessened and also that sharpness that's automatically added from iPhone videos seems to have been toned down a little bit as well. Also, probably because of the increased file sizes and the stuff, the information that you're getting from Apple Log, it does seem like these clips are a little bit easier to grade as well. Obviously, I found that the clips don't fall apart as fast as previous iPhone footage did when it was recorded in regular ProRes with regular image processing. Now, I'll definitely be experimenting with this more to see what the limitations are and what it's capable of handling. But honestly, with these tests, I really wanted to do it with the stock camera app because that's the thing that most people are gonna be using and I wanted to see what the image quality that you get out of it is and also if you can use it, especially for color grading and mixing in with other footage as well. Anyway, that's where I'm gonna leave it for this video. Leave a like down below if you like this video, if you learned something, hit the subscribe button as well. And don't forget to leave me a comment to let me know your thoughts as well. What do you think of Apple Log? Did you get the new iPhone 15 Pro Max? Does this sway your decision in any way? Were you just waiting to see these types of videos to make your decision? Let me know in the comments below. I'll definitely be answering and talking with you guys as well. And let me know what you wanna see in the future as well. Like I said, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, go out there and create something. A lot of it that is.